So I'm going to talk about my laboratory. We are developing technologies, and technologies that have very small features, very small components. These components are, are cells, cells, the building blocks of tissues. We are using these to regrow tissues in the body. And we're, we're trying to solve really big problems, very challenging medical problems, and specifically using these to treat these disease or damaged tissues. In the area of bone repair, cartilage repair, so damage to your knees, and then also in the area of neural, uh, spinal cord repair. So this is the field of tissue engineering. And tissue engineering has been an emerging field for the past 10, say 10 to 20 years. And so the idea is we take a patient's own cells, and those cells are then manipulated so we can then get them to repair tissues. So how do we do that? Because you take those cells out of the body, they won't necessarily know to go, when you put, put them back in the body, to repair tissue. So we've got to give them the right cues. So if you look at stage number three, those cues, we use a scaffold to do that. That scaffold drives those cells to repair tissue, provides the right triggers, the right cues to get them to turn over and re repair, repair those tissues. So what cells do we use? This is really important. How do we choose the right cells? So if we're trying to repair, say, the brain, or we're trying to repair, say, bone, you think, well, we'll just use cells of that tissue, cells we know that can repair, repair that or make that tissue. But those cells aren't necessarily readily available, right? You can't take a person's brain, take a little, cell, little bit of cells out of there and put them back. So how do you decide? So stem cells have been the popular cells cells of choice because of that. So stem cells can virtually turn into any cell type in the body. And so we've been focusing on adult cells, adult stem cells. Why is that? Because virtually every tissue in your body contains a very small reservoir of these, of these cells, of these stem cells. If you can isolate them, you can grow them up pretty easily in the laboratory. So we've been focusing on bone marrow, these bone marrow stem cells. And those stem cells have been well characterized over the past really 20, maybe 30 years, have been used clinically, have been proven to be safe and, and can actually repair tissue. So we specifically use these mesenchymal stem cells. And why do we use them? Because we're interested in repairing orthopedic tissue, the bone and the cartilage. So those stem cells can really turn into all these different cell types that are shown here, but we need to provide the right cues that they kind of stay on track and turn into those cells that we want them to go to turn into, so bone and, and cartilage. So how do we do that? Every, all those little steps, those arrows, you got to provide those, those right cues. And so that scaffold is the key. So you can think of a scaffold analogy where that scaffold is sitting up beside a, a large building. So workers get on that scaffold, it supports them, helps them to repair the building. Um, so those, the cells, the small scale, that's essentially what our, our scaffold, our biomaterial, is doing in the body. The cells jump on, attach, it needs to support their attachment, and support their ability to, to, to synthesize this tissue, make this tissue. So what about these problems, these big problems? So bone repair. We're talking about here, there's over 2.2 million bone graft procedures, okay, worldwide, per year. And so these are used to treat these very large defects that will, will not repair okay, themselves. And so bone grafts have a very limited supply. You have a very limited amount of bone that you can actually use for yourself. And donor bone from, peop from people or even cadavers are very limited in terms of their ability to even work. So we use these strategies, the stem cell strategies, to repair these very challenging, very challenging defects. And so we've developed this scaffold here. It's porous, so it's got these large pores. Cells actually sit on it. And it also has these very small little features, kind of granular features in, in the scaffold that help those, those cells to attach. The cells actually anchor themselves down on those features. And so we made that architectural design, but also it's composed of a bioceramic. So that ceramic contains calcium and phosphorus, so that specific chemistry stimulates those cells to actually turn, in, turn into bone cells. Calcium phosphate is normally in your bone tissue, so we're using that as the chemistry for the scaffold to get the cells to turn over and, and form bone, and they form a lot of bone. So here we have a defect there on the, far, on the far left, and that defect in the bone normally will not repair itself, but if you treat it with the, the stem cells on that scaffold, it will fill in with, with bone, okay, over a period of time. 
and completely heal that de defect. And so what we've discovered is, one, that scaffold works to drive the cells, but also the stem cells can come from that patient, him or herself, but they also, we can get them from donor. They can be donated stem cells from a, from a person that's completely un unrelated from that patient. So we can use donor, or what we call allogeneic stem cells, in that, in that tissue, and it'll fully repair that tissue and will, will not cause rejection. And so that's a major finding because those cells can be used and you don't have to use immunosuppressive therapy on, on these patients. They can, can heal and, and heal very readily. So we can improve upon that, that discovery, okay? That's actually now a product, it's called OsteoCell, that's uh, has, uh, in use. We can improve upon that bone formation or rate of for bone formation by the design of that scaffold. And so what I showed you before then was a porous scaffold that looks kind of like a sponge. So again, on that far left that you see there, looks like a sponge, fairly large pores in comparison to the, to the cell. And so what the cell is actually sensing is more like a two-dimensional structure. But if you make features at a smaller scale, so into these fibers, then the cells are actually sensing a little more of a, a greater surface area. So they're able to actually attach more readily to that surface because there's actually more, more area there for the cells to actually anchor themselves onto. Cells have little feet. You can think about it, they're called receptors. So they're actually attaching to proteins, and proteins are sitting down onto your scaffold. So more of that protein interaction can happen with those cells. And so if you get down even to the nanoscale, there's a lot of interaction. So cells attach really well. So we make these structures then using a process called electrospinning. And this electrospinning was actually developed in the textile industry. So it's like, you know, the, the way you make clothing, okay? It's like the clothes that you have on. These are the scaffolding structures. That's what they look like. And it's a fairly simple process. You just apply this electric voltage, okay, to the material, and you start to produce these, these fibers. And we have very good control over dimension. So we are able to create then these nanostructures, nano-sized fibers, and you can actually go up into the larger, what we call micron-sized fiber structures, and very large micron-sized fiber. And we can arrange these fibers. You can be unorganized, what we call random, or we can make them align, aligned, is what you see there in that lower, lower quadrant. And so all that's important, again, for cueing the cells. And so what we've been able to show is that that nanostructure, and as you get to kind of the lower, smaller micron size, does affect the way the cells really attach to the substrate. It improves attachment. So the cells here is a cell body. The cell body's kind of staying there in green. You see how very organized it is on the nanostructure. If you go up to higher, much larger micron fiber structures, that the cells start to look a little unorganized. That green, green arrays actually look fairly unorganized. So we improve, improve attachment that way. So if we go back to that bone application, how do we actually improve the rate of bone repair? We've designed those materials. We're now using these fibers. We also incorporate one more interesting feature. We now use nanoceramics into those, in those fibers. And those nanoceramics that are shown here are embedded and dispersed throughout the fibers. And when, so when you get down to this really small scale, those ceramics actually become extremely reactive. And so when you put that into the body, they become so reactive that they actually form what's called bone, bone mineral on the surface of these materials. Okay, and that's really important, again, for the cells to actually uh, begin to, to form bone tissue. So that reactivity, we've been able to show in these bone defects, just the material alone will rapidly produce, quickly produce new bone tissue. So it fills in very quickly because those nanoceramics start to react so quickly. An even more challenging medical problem is cartilage, cart or the repair of cartilage. Okay, so if you get injured due to a sports injury, or maybe just long term, as you become, as you age, as you become older, you get wear and tear there in your cartilage. Cartilage will not repair itself. And so, yes, okay. Cartilage will not repair itself. And so, and it becomes damaged, it can come, become so severely damaged that it will lead to osteoarthritis. So over 40, so 47 million Americans suffer from this condition. So there's currently no technology out there 
that will repair this no normal cartilage to the point where it's actually functional again. So we take in a bio-inspired approach, and similar to what really I've been talking about, cells are actually seeing or sensing in the body these kind of nano, very small features, and that's cueing them to turn it into this tissue. But we are looking very specifically at cartilage. Cartilage is made up of these, these very small fi uh, fibers, collagen fibers. And these collagen fibers are decorated with a little more collagen, but also another specific type of molecule. It's called GAG, okay, or glycosaminoglycan. And what's interesting about this glycosaminoglycan is, is that actually helps to support all the mechanical loading that your knee undergoes when you're walking, when you're running. It also helps to support biological activity, so it actually provides the cues to those cells because it actually combines with what we call growth factors, and those factors stimulate, drive the cells to turn into these chondrocytes or cartilage cells. So we have been able to improve upon what's naturally there, that gag, and created a gag mimetic, okay? So the chemistry is actually altered a little bit so it becomes better, performs a little better. And what we've been able to show with the stem cells, with that GAD mimetic, it actually drives them to turn into cartilage cells very quickly. And they form a lot of cartilage tissue. So shown there on the right, that intense pink stain is very uniform cartilage, articular cartilage tissue. So the cells look like cartilage cells, and you've got a lot of that cartilage, a large, lot of cartilage tissue present. Another key interesting fact about those GAG materials is that it has another physical property called piezoelectric activity. And so what's important about that is if you apply a very small, minute mechanical deformation, you'll get electrical stimulation, okay? And so we then do make or create a bio-inspired material. We've created a synthetic piezoelectric material to actually get improved uh, piezoelectric activity. Out of, that, out of that material. So we apply a small little deformation and you get electrical stimulation. And so this is happening at the nano scale. So very small, again, uh, here is kind of reverse is where you apply a voltage and you see this kind of deformation happening in the material at the nano scale. And that's important, again, for cueing the cells because they're attaching. They're attaching, their little feet are attaching to the materials at that nano scale and it's stimulating, stimulating them, okay, through this feature. So we've been able to show for cartilage, again, it drives them to form cartilage. Okay? They, they form these aggregates and start to turn over and form cartilage tissue, and we've shown these in a, in a defect as well, that they produce, uh, make cartilage tissue. So I'm going to conclude here with the, the final most challenging application that we're dealing with in my laboratory, and that's the area of neural, uh, spinal cord repair. And why is this so challenging? Okay, one of the most popular then uh, people that have suffered from this injury is Superman, right? Or the actor, Christopher Reeve, who played Superman. And unfortunately, when you're injured to the spinal cord, okay, um, then this becomes completely devastating, debilitating. You've, you can become completely paralyzed, okay? So there's over a quarter million people then suffering from this condition, and that injury Unfortunately, spinal cord does not have ability to repair itself. And there's currently, again, no treatment out there to actually repair it so that it's fully functioning. So the brain, essentially, once that injury occurs, the brain is then disconnected from the rest of your body. Signals from the brain travel down that spinal cord and connect you to the, re to the rest of your body. But that's, that is no longer there. So we use what's called piezoelectric conduits, okay? We're developing those piezoelectric materials that will stimulate the cord to actually regrow. And we've been able to show with a different type of stem cell, we're using neural stem cells here, that if we put these on these materials, they will drive them to become neurons and start extending these, these axons or these nerves. And so in, shown here then are the, the red stain, these are the neurons that these stem cells have turned into. If you don't use that piece of material, you don't get, you don't get that, those neurons to develop. So, so very interesting finding. Again, the advantage here is this material has this intrinsic property. You don't have to use some external stimulation to get this to happen. The material itself will, will stimulate, cause electrical stimulation. So I just want to conclude here the importance of this technology 
and designing these scaffolds here to have these very small features because they help the cells, support the cells, and drive these cells to produce, produce the tissue. So we are developing this technology, and our goal here, and really as a biomedical engineer, is to help these patients or improve the quality of life in these patients. So I would like to thank you.